Good morning, KL7L, part two on uh, our attempts at installing a spider beam 26 meter fiberglass telescopic to support my uh, antennas here. So yesterday we just sort of did the out the outline of what we've done so far and of course this is just in progress there's nothing really connected up yet uh, there's no tension correct tensions on the the guy ropes so lots of bends and stuff and we're not at full height we haven't connected the or the earth radial system or the fencing but i did want to talk a bit more about the actual aerial itself and i've connected uh, collected here some information that comes with uh, the spider beam uh, this one came from Vibraplex, uh, the makers of fine Morse keys for the last N number of years. They're the U USA distributors. It comes with an instruction sheet of how to guy the, uh, the spider beam. We're using the 26 meter one. You can see each one of these sections here, one, two, three, four, all the way up to the top here to 15, so it's 15 sections. And they're roughly, uh, what, six foot in length. Um, it's telling you to go out at 15 meters. Um, I'm using trees uh, at the end here with uh, rings into the uh, trunk to, uh, to connect my guy ropes. So the differences uh, are, depending on where the trees are, varies so the lengths here you see that they've estimated that you require with the guy rope are somewhat different in my case and i did the calculation using a using trig uh, so they're saying that for the lower guy ropes use uh, thicker um, rope um, Dacron, polyester, or Kevlar to keep the weight down. And for the top one, if you can, use the uh, much thinner stuff. And for the, my case up here, I'm just down up level 14, is where my top cap uh, is connected. I don't use the top section, it's far too spindly. I suppose if you use a straight vertical, It'll be okay. So this is what comes with it. So it's four guys at three levels. Two meter Kevlar for the lower, although I'm using five in some places. And one or two millimeter Kevlar for the upper guy. These are all connected on the ground. Um, they have like a, a, a sheath, which I'll show you in a minute, um, that goes over the pole with like four ways that you can push the guy ropes through and connect them without attaching them directly to the uh, the post the uh, let's talk about how these sections are connected together they're using I don't know what you guys call them I use these call these terry clips uh, sir clips I don't know what they call this isn't actually one of them this is one I've got left over uh, from another project and the one that comes from Germany is slightly less thick um, the connector here to do it up is actually a seven millimeter uh, diameter tool and that comes they provide that so it's seven meters seven millimeters uh, it's not the same uh, so it's smaller than you can get in the USA so watch out for that and it comes with a kit they supply a kit um, and they tell you how to uh, prepare the rubber in here which is goes against the mast and it has a heat shrink outer and it tells you how to cut the various lengths and which type of um, segment uses what type of stainless steel clamp and you can see that there's quite a few different types of clamps that they supply. And the clamps have actually got the dimension on them if you um, if you do get lost. But I segregate these out, make sure that they were labeled correctly so I knew which one I want. 
and then it tells you to how long the piece of rubber to cut and then it tells you how far the piece of rubber is supposed to be right up against the end of the the connector and it tells you how far the heat shrink should be up you don't want to get the heat shrink right close to the uh, the nut here so when the circlip comes round, the end of it comes through here you don't want it to get underneath the heat shrink uh, you want it to be free so just um, I did made a bit of mistake here making this one of them a bit close and ended up wrapping underneath here so that that takes some time but it does give you good instructions of how to do it um, it took me a couple of hours to put this together I suppose and to make sure that I had the right circlips on the mast when I put it together on the ground uh, so that's that so they, they do supply this with the kit they do supply um, lengths of heat shrink which you'll need to use a heat gun with or some other thing to secure the rubber and again the rubber is the thing that is in contact with the mast and stops it slipping down and you don't need a lot of pressure it's actually quite a large surface area uh, we talked to uh, talked yesterday about the guying stuff uh, you can buy stuff from poly uh, from viperprex which is uh, better quality than i've got here it's uh, this is the stuff i got off um, amazon it's from a company called 9km this is a weaved kevlar and um, made in Japan and for this size of Kevlar which is braided this has a break uh, a 200 foot long spool and a supposedly 500 pound braking strain you know hopefully I'll never get close to that and for the upper it's uh, they use this much smaller stuff here which is uh, the uh, 200 pound braking strain and again very lightweight very thin as you can see the top cap wire um, is uh, a, <laughs> it's CQ I've forgotten the name of it CQ534234 which is uh, stainless steel or steel with a copper um, coating on the outside of it and again for power to weight or survivability they recommend this is stuff you want to keep the weight the top cap weight and windage as uh, low as possible I think I got this from the wire man in the, in the US the uh, support what's holding the wire up in the air for the top cap is fluorocarbon is it pdvf or pvdf is recommended and i'm using 20 pound braking strain not a lot um, but if i if you go you know up to 100 pound the cross-sectional area and the wind loading and the weight uh, will go up exponentially so this is like a trial method i'll see how this goes and uh, survives the winds here in alaska I've got a little box here which I keep all my stuff in. Um, I do mark the uh, the guy ropes. We have a lot of guys. So it's four times three, 12 guy ropes. And it's very easy to get those um, confused. And so I do mark each guy rope at the bottom with uh, what it is. And actually on the mast itself. So this is level two west. So I know uh, when I connect the, to, to attach this to the guy rope at the bottom, I know where it is. I also attach the lead weight at the end of each guy uh, with a coloured lead, lead weight, uh, which is great when you figure out that you've actually got a guy rope in the wrong position and you want to throw it over the top. Uh, I've got just a 25 seconds, so I'll talk about the uh, the earthing and the grounding in the next video, KL7L.